Trust you have your Bibles this morning. Um, if you can, please stand and we'll read John chapter 17, just one verse. We're going to read John chapter 17, verse 1. Okay, just verse 1. These words spoke Jesus, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. You may be seated. Just got done singing out of 220 in the hymnal, The Love of God. John chapter 17 is a, is a chapter that shouts love. From the Lord Jesus Christ to His Father, to His disciples that He's been training the last three, three and a half years, and is about to leave them, and also love for the future Believers, you and I. Listen to what he says at the beginning of John, or of, uh, yeah, John 17, verse 1. These words spoke Jesus. These words. Authoritative words. You know, words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's about to lift his eyes to heaven. And he'll say, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. If you've ever read John 17, we've looked at it in the past. What a prayer. What a prayer it is. Old English Puritan Thomas Watson once said, A godly man cannot live without prayer. He said, a godly man cannot live without prayer. The Bible commands us to pray. It commands us. we got numerous passages in Scripture that you can look up yourself and see where the Bible commands you and I as believers to pray. Records examples throughout from Genesis to Revelation. Records examples of godly men and women in prayer. Numerous examples throughout the Bible that it gives us of godly men and women praying to the Creator God. In the Old Testament, I found a few. In the Old Testament, Abraham prayed for his son Ishmael. For God to spare Sodom. Abraham's servant prayed for guidance in finding a wife for Isaac. Isaac prayed for Rebekah's womb to be open. Jacob prayed that God would protect him from Esau. Eli would pray for Hannah. And on and on and on. You get the picture where I'm going with this. And one of the most unusual times of prayer is Jonah in the belly of a fish. As he prayed for his, in his mind, his hopeless situation. But he knew that if there was any hope to be found, it's not would be found in himself. He knew it would be found in the Lord God. Even after... His ascension, the Lord Jesus, after His ascension, we have immediately the believers in Him finding themselves in prayer at the beginning of Acts. Acts chapter 1, 14, and Acts chapter 2, verse 42, mentions the believers coming together in a form of corporate prayer. Paul, in the New Testament, Paul, after his conversion is marked by a life of continual prayer. Over and over and over again, 
He records himself down as, as praying to his Lord, his Savior, his God. But as many and as vast as these prayers are, and, and as many times as you can see in Scripture where men and women have, have found themselves in prayer and for very various amounts of things, of different reasons, myriad of things, we see it throughout Scripture. The supreme example of prayer most definitely comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And most definitely comes from Him. The Lord Jesus Christ gives us the correct way to pray. It was so powerful that when He prayed, the disciples come to Him and said what? Hey, Teach us to pray like that in Luke chapter 11. Lord, teach us to pray like we just heard you pray. From the beginning of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ to the end, it was marked with times of frequent prayer. He would pray at his baptism during his first preaching tour before choosing the twelve apostles, before feeding the five thousand, after feeding the five thousand, before feeding the four thousand. He would pray for the children that were brought to him before raising Lazarus from the dead at the Last Supper. And on and on and on it goes. A demonstration of the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer to his Father. Listen, if your life is going to be the life that it should be in service for the Lord Jesus Christ, it must be marked by prayer. It must be filled with prayer. It must be a daily thing of yours, if you will. No Christian can fully and effectively serve the Lord Jesus Christ whose, whose life is not filled with continual prayer to the one who saved him or her. It just doesn't work. Amen. How many times have you seen a brother and sister in Christ in need and, and you know they've if one thing lacks in their life, it's, it's prayer. They're trying to correct the issues without prayer. Jesus Christ in John chapter 17. As the cross approaches. Finds himself, places himself in prayer to his Father. These words spake Jesus, and he what? He lifted up his eyes to heaven. Turn, turn real quick and if I can find real quick. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, real fast. And Notice in John chapter 17, verse 1, I'll read it again while you're turning to Luke 18. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. In Luke chapter 18, about verse 9, And he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican, or tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, listen, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners and unjust. They are adulterers. Even as this publican or as this tax collector. 
I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. The Pharisee makes it all about who? Himself. And the tax collector or publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto what? Heaven. But smote upon his breast saying, God be merciful to me a sinner. Notice the difference. From John 17 verse 1 to Luke chapter 18 verse 13. In John 17 1, the son lifts up his eyes to his father. He pours his heart out to his father. He lifts up his eyes and says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, what thy son also may glorify thee. But yet we see in Luke chapter 18, verse 13, the, the publican, the tax collector, standing afar off, could not even lift his eyes unto heaven. For he seen himself as a sinful, sinful man. It's all by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. After you come to faith that, that you can even lift your eyes to the heavens and thank Him for saving your soul. See, the Pharisee was too good, too proud, too much in himself to even acknowledge who God was. The tax collector, he had it right. He seen himself as sinful and wretched. He couldn't even glance into the heavens to the one who could save his soul and who would save his soul. And here in John chapter 17, the Lord Jesus Christ lifts up his eyes to heaven and says, My Father, my Father. Jesus, up to the cross, knows and knew the importance, of course, of prayer to His Father. Look at your life. Is it filled with prayer? Is your life filled with prayer to the one who saved your soul? Do you long to commune with him? Do you long to have fellowship with him in prayer? Do you long to speak to him? Or is your life so filled with yourself that you have absolutely very little or no time? To speak to Him. Turn to Psalm this morning, Psalm 86, and we'll flip to Psalm 86 and listen to what Psalm 86 says when we're dealing with prayer. Bow down thy ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. David says, Lord, I ask you just to bend down, O Lord. Can you hear my prayer? I need your help. I need your help. I'm poor and I'm needy. In and of myself, Lord, there's nothing I can possibly do right. I need you. See, this is the prayer of a, of a man who's, who knows, 
who knows where to go in his times of need. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant. I trust in thee. Protect me. I am devoted to you. You are my God. You are my God. I serve you. I trust you. I give it all to you. For what you have done for me, I owe you everything. Right? Amen. Everything. But yet be careful. So many today move around, and as in the past and as will be in the future, move around and as act as if the Lord God is entitled to give them something. When he owes you nothing. Amen. Nothing. It's only by his grace and mercy that you have what you have today. Amen. It's only by his grace and mercy you are even able to get out of bed and come and worship him in this building that he's blessed you with. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto you, what? Daily. I mean, daily, I constantly call out to you. I constantly call out to you for your mercy. Is your life constantly calling out to Him for His mercy? For His forgiveness in your life? Because you look back in your days behind you and, and, and you know you've messed it up so much. Be merciful unto me, O Lord. For I cry unto you daily. I constantly cry unto you. I constantly seek you. I constantly seek you out. As beautiful as Psalm 86 is in, in, in prayer, it, it doesn't compare nothing to John 17 when, when the Son looks up to the Father Amen. and prays for Himself, prays for His, His disciples, and prays for you and me. What a picture of love. Amen. What a picture of love. Your life should be so filled with prayer for, for the believers of this church. Your life should be filled, as was mentioned here this morning, for, in, in prayer for your lost loved ones, your lost friends. Things of that should, should totally consume your mind. Worship so should consume you. Glorifying Him should consume you. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. In other words, give me the joy. Give me the joy. Men and women today search everywhere for joy, for peace, for happiness, don't they? They travel great distances just for a break. Just to get away. Haven't you heard that before? I'm going on vacation. i got to get away. But here the psalmist says, Rejoice the soul of thy servant. Lord, I look to you for the peace. I look to you for the joy that I long for. I look to you. It's unto you, Lord, do I lift up my soul. It's unto you, Lord, do I give my life, is what he's saying. You think Jesus gave his life to his father? Bob said it a couple weeks ago. He gave it what? Perfectly. Amen. Remember? 
The same prayer we just got done mentioning in John chapter John chapter 17. Remember, if you just bump up a few a few verses in John 17. I've glorified thee on the earth. I finished the work which thou gavest me to do. I did your work in my life perfectly. As Bob made mention just two weeks ago. I did it perfectly. I gave it to you. Everything I did, Father, was so you could be glorified. The psalmist in Psalm 86, Rejoice thy soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, for it's unto you do I give my life. It's unto you. I give it to you. But my goodness, man, we... It seems like we, we, we long to just... just it be about us, don't we? We long for it to be about me and me and me. And the sad thing is, is when a parent or an adult does that, they inevitably they, they give that same mentality to the next generation and, and it's all about me to them too and less about Christ. Rejoice the soul as I serve, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. It's unto you, Lord. It's, up to, it's unto you do I, look, uh, do I look heavenward. It's unto you. It's for your glory. It's for your honor. It's all about you. Lord, we come into this church this morning, and it's all about you. It's all about you. We open up each and every week in prayer and praise. Why? Because it's all about you. Listen, it doesn't take long before, if you're not careful, announcements override the worship of a holy, righteous God. It doesn't take long. I've sat in churches before where it would go through 10, 15 minutes of announcements. And listen, I'm not, and I'll just, I'm afraid to admit it. I'm sad to admit it. But after the announcements, all I thought about for the next 25, 30 minutes was the announcements. It must always and always be about Him yeah. and Him alone. You get the preliminaries out of the way really quick. you're not careful you will make it about you about me I rejoice the soul of thy servant for unto thee O Lord do I lift up my soul for thou Lord you are what you are good you're ready to forgive your plenteous in mercy unto them that call upon you. It's you, Lord. You are so good. You are ready to forgive. You're full of unfailing love. You, 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 you are ready to give to those who call upon you. That's who you are. You're my God. What a prayer David's praying here this morning. What a prayer. He says, Lord, you're good. Lord, it's your goodness. It's by the Lord's goodness that you can even breathe today. It's His goodness. It's by the Lord's goodness that I can even stand up here. For thou, Lord, art good. You're ready to forgive. Look, he mentions the mercy of the Lord God. He says, you're ready to forgive. You're ready to forgive. Even up to the cross. Christ said what? Father. Forgive them, for they know not what they what do. 
Even on the cross as a thief hung on the cross. Did he not? Did he not say to the thief? He said it will be in paradise. That you will be with me. It will be in paradise. Forgiveness. You are ready to forgive. Unlike us, who at times we want to pick and choose when we want to forgive, when we want to forget, when it fits in our little schedule of humanity. But the Lord God, His His mercy is what? His mercy is overflowing, isn't it? You are so full of mercy. You are so full of an unfailing love. We just read it this morning, or not, we sung it this morning in 220 of the hymnal. The love of God. So rich, so pure, so deep. It's an unfailing love. Jesus, He kneels down in John 17 and He prays to His Father, the, the unfailing giver of love. He prays for His disciples. He prays for you and I. You're plentiful in mercy and unto all them that call upon you. Listen, if a man or a woman or child truly calls out to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, if they truly repent and truly call out to Him, He says, you will what? Forgive. Amen. You will forgive. You will forgive them. You will have mercy on them. Lord, give an ear. Give an ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to my voice of my supplications. Lord, please, Lord, listen closely to what I'm about to say. I ask you to hear my urgent cry. Give an ear, O Lord, unto my prayer. Attend to the voice of my supplications. Please, Lord, listen to what I'm about to say. Have you ever found yourself in prayer like that? Huh? You just couldn't wait to get in prayer. You just couldn't wait to spill your heart out to the Lord God. And, you, and it's as if you're saying, Lord, please listen to what I'm saying. Give me a listening ear. The interesting thing about that, listen, to all His believers, He always has a listening ear. He always does. We talked about that this morning and back in uh, back in First Peter. We looked at First Peter this morning in chapter chapter three, verse twelve. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous; his ears are open unto their what. The eyes of the Lord lay over the righteous. They are always upon His children. Listen, that should thrill you. That should, I mean, that should just, just thrill you to know that His eyes are constantly on you. And His ears are open unto their prayers. 1 Peter 3.12 is simply saying exactly what Jesus is praying in part of John chapter 17. I pray for my disciples who I'm physically leaving and I pray for the coming believers after them. May your eyes always be upon them. May our ears always be listening to them. What a beautiful picture 
of the provisions, of the care of the Almighty God to His children. But yet, here we are, still whining, still complaining, when our boat of life starts to take water, we feel like we're about to sink, aren't we? Isn't that how we are? But yet we see the promise this morning in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. We see the promise in Psalm 86, okay? And we see the promise of, of, of the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ that, that, that prays to the Father for you and me. Now listen, I'm sure you're like me and I'm like you. We've had a lot of people pray for us through, through, our, through our Christian lives, have we not? But let me tell you something. Nobody has ever prayed for you the way the Lord Jesus Christ has prayed for you. Amen. Nobody ever has nor, nor anybody ever will. And we'll see that if the Lord wills that we move through John 17 as He prays for His disciples and He prays for you and me for our care. Amen. For our care. First Peter chapter 3 again, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. His ears are constantly listening to what the righteous has to pray to what the righteous is asking for. Listen to what David says in Psalm 86 in verse, in verse 7. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. In the day of my trouble. I'll call on you whenever I'm in trouble. And you'll answer The issue with us is, as humans, is sometimes we don't like the answer, do we? But He answers. But that boils down to spiritual maturity, does it not? That boils down to your how close you are to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've stood by people before and we prayed for their loved ones that were passing, that they would not pass, but it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be. They didn't like the answer, but the answer was given. Amen. Now it was going to come down to their spiritual maturity and how close they were to the very one that they prayed to. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you. And thou will answer me. There's times in our lives. There's going to come a time in your life, there's probably already come a time in your life, when it was so difficult for you to even roll yourself out of bed for struggles within your mind and in your body or whatever the situation may be and you found yourself calling out to the Lord God in your own personal day of trouble. It might have been for yourself, it might have been for your child, it might have been for your spouse, your mom, your dad, or whatever the situation may be. You knew the one as a believer, you knew the one who to call out to and He would answer. The psalmist, he knew who to call to. Amen. It's very interesting that back in John chapter 17, we see Jesus looking heavenward to his Father and calling out to him. Calling out to his Father. Father, I did it all perfectly for you. You know what may we when, when it's all said and done? Prayerfully, we'll be able to say, Lord, we did it all for you. We did it all for you. 
Among the gods there is none like you. O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. David praises the Lord God and he says, Listen, there's been many gods, but there's none like you. There's no God like you. For you are the only one that gives mercy and grace. For you are the only one that gives unfailing love. For you are the only one that always has a listening ear to His children. For you are the only one. Amen. Remember in 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah said what? Call out to your God. Call out to your gods and let's see if they're like my God. It was kind of a little comical there at one point when Elijah said, you keep calling and you keep dancing, but he must be sleeping. Or maybe he's in the bathroom, he said, relieving himself. It wasn't but a short time later that Elijah called down the one true God. The same God whose eyes lie over you today. Whose eyes lie over Bass Chapel today. Who cares for you on your way home. Who will care for you tomorrow if He wills for you to be here tomorrow. That God, the same God who Jesus looked to heaven and said, Father, I did it all perfectly for you. May we, may we have the same attitude. Father, may we do it for you. May we have the same attitude as David had, at least in Psalm 86, in, in this prayer. Lord, I bow down for, to you. Lord, I am poor and needy. Lord, I ask you to keep my soul. Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, I ask you to rejoice my soul. Lord, I know who to call to in my time of times of trouble. It's you. Lord, I know you'll give me a listening ear. Lord, I know it's you. Lord, I know all, among all the gods there is none like you. We can look at the, our lives today, can we not? Lord, I, I know that amongst everything going on around us, there is nothing that compares to you. Amen. Nothing. And it doesn't take much to shake us up, does it? We're living in a time in our nation where a simple thing is an election is shaking us up. How silly. How silly. As we close, how silly it is to let little things shake us up. When all we have to do is go to Him in prayer and He will put you at ease. Open up the book and He will put you at ease. I mean, my goodness gracious, what's going to happen is going to happen. He moves in the hearts of all kings and all rulers. Amen. Let us find peace in who He is. Let us find peace in prayer. Amen. As Jesus looked up heavenward back in John chapter 17 to His Father. He said, Father, the hour has come. It's come. You know, there's going to be a day in your life when your hour is going to come. It's just it. You will not live one second past that hour.
He says, Lord, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Father, there's nothing left to do. I give it to you. I pray that in your life and in my life this morning, that we will do all we can do until that hour comes for His glory and for His honor. And our life will be filled with intimate prayer to the very one that saved our souls. Because listen, and I'm going to close. Listen, if your life is a life of weak prayer, you will have a life of weak service for your Redeemer. I guarantee you that. I can assure you. If you look on your life right now, and it's a life of weak prayer to the one who saved you, no matter what type of show you put on coming through this door, the truth is, you will have a life of weak service to the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you and we glorify you. You just be magnified, Lord. And example after example after example is shown to us of men and women in Scripture about prayer. But as magnificent, as beautiful as some of the prayers are, none of them will ever compare to when you pray to the Father. None of them will. You prayed so mightily, so intimately to the Father, that your disciples said, teach us to pray like you. Lord, do what you must do at this church so that we can be a beacon of light to the lost community around us. Father, we thank you. Bring us back here this evening to once again look upon your truth, look upon your pages. As you speak to us so clearly from your book, may we apply it back to our lives so you can be glorified, you can be magnified. And may we never forget, as David said this morning in Psalm 86, your love is unfailing, your mercy is everlasting. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.